So we started with limits. We talked about the two problems with calculus. Then we talked about limits from a graph. We looked at how you get it graphically by just sort of looking at the graph and sort of coming in. And then we looked at a table of values. So the other method and the one that's most obvious or, or easiest to use really is this method of direct substitution. And essentially what you do is what this describes. So direct substitutions, going to directly substitute, you're going to take this number and put it in for x. So we're going to get 1 squared minus 1. And we get 1 squared minus 1, that's 1 minus 1, and that's 0. And we're done. You will notice that that's the same answer I got with the table of values. Okay, but this was much quicker. So that's how direct substitution works, and that's what we're going to start with, unless we don't have the function. If you're given the graph and not the function, like we were here, we don't know what this function is. It just says f of x. But we can use the graph to just look and decide what the answer is. Here we were given the function. If we're given the function, we're not going to use the table of values. We're going to use direct substitution. If direct substitution doesn't work, and we'll talk about a situation where it might not, then we have to either do something to try to make it work, or we have to use a table of values. So we can always kind of fall back on the table of values, but we don't want to use it first. All right? So direct substitution, you just plug the number in and see what happens. But sometimes when, that, when, when you do that, it doesn't work nicely. So when I plug 2 into this, I'm going to get 2 squared minus 4 divided by 2 minus 2. And I'm going to say, well, that's just 0, and that's 0. And I say, but what's that? All right? And that is what we call an indeterminate form. And you can see up here that there's two of them that we're going to really zero in on, 0 over 0, and infinity over infinity. And what happens in these situations is you have competing sort of math laws. So when any, you're supposed to, no matter what you divide by zero, it's supposed to be infinite. It's supposed to go to infinity or, or it's undefined. So we say that shouldn't have a value. But then if we take zero and divide it by anything, we're supposed to get zero. So you have these two math rules that both say something is always true and yet they're competing against each other. And so what ends up happening is you have this indeterminate form. You have this form that you don't really know what the answer is. And it's the same thing with infinity over infinity. We're going to talk about infinite limits later, but you can get the same thing because infinity divided by anything should still be infinite. But then infinity divided by infinity, anything divided by itself is supposed to be one. So it's, it's difficult to know what the answer is. And so these two forms, zero over zero, infinity over infinity, actually have different values depending on the situation. So in this case, Situation when this happens, I've set up here. You have to factor or reduce or expand or get a common denominator or rationalize the denominator. You have to do something to this to try to remove the problem. The problem is this I don't want to divide by zero. So, to remove that problem, what I hope to do is try to find a way to get rid of the denominator. So, what I'm going to do is x squared minus 4, I'm going to actually factor it, it's a difference of squares. So I'm going to factor it as x minus 2, x plus 2. And when I do that, on the bottom, I still have my x minus 2, but what happens is these cancel. And so I'm just left with the limit as x approaches 2 of x plus 2. And that just gives me 2 plus 2, which is, whoops, I'm getting ahead of myself. It's 2 plus 2, which is 4. And you notice then that in this particular instance, we have... 0 over 0 is equal to 4, which is not a result that makes any sense to us necessarily, but it's because of that weird anomaly of what happens when you divide by 0 versus what happens when you divide 0 by something. So that's direct substitution, and that's what happens when we, when we do a limit by direct substitution. Sometimes it doesn't work. So here's another example. I have the limit as x approaches 0. When I put 0 in here, I get root 1 minus 1 root my 1 minus 1 is 0, but then x by itself is also 0. So I look at that and I say, oh, what do I do? And what I do in cases like this is I look and say, square roots, maybe I can multiply by a conjugate. So I'm going to multiply the top by root x plus 1 plus 1. 
And I'm going to do the same thing on the bottom. And I know that equal sign is there and it shouldn't be right now. Okay, I'm not saying that that's equal to that. I'm just saying I'm going to multiply that by that. And the reason I'm going to do that is because I'm noticing that when I multiply this by itself, I just get rid of the square root. So I get x plus 1. And 1 times 1 is minus 1. So you end up with x plus 1 minus 1, which is what I want. Because then what happens to the 1 and the minus 1? They go away. I know you can't answer me. but And then x and x, they cancel now. So I'm left with 1 over the square root of 0 plus 1 plus 1. And that gives me 1 over 1 plus 1, which is 1 half. Okay, I, you notice notation-wise, too, it's important to recognize I didn't leave, I left the limit here because I didn't put 0 in. I left the limit here because I didn't put 0 in. But after everything canceled, and I actually replaced x with 0, I dropped the limit. So I'm not writing limit as x approaches 0 anymore because x is 0 now. Okay? So you write limit as x approaches 0 all the way through, or limit as x approaches whatever. You write the limit all the way through until you actually let x be that number, and then you don't anymore. So that is how you do direct substitution. That's another example. Now if we do another example, here's one where if I put 9 into this, I get 9 minus 9 on the top, so that's 0, that's where I'm getting that 0 from. And here I'm getting root 9 minus 3, which is 0, that's where I'm getting that 0 from. So I get 0 over 0, and I think, okay, well, there, what do I do? And there's two ways to approach this. You can either take the top and factor it as a difference of squares and make it root x minus 3 times root x plus 3. Okay, we're not used to using a difference of squares. Like we're used to this being x squared and putting x minus 3 and x plus 3, but differences of squares also work for these. You just have to take the square root of them. So if they're single powers, they become half. And then on the bottom, I have the square root of x minus 3. And so what happens is these cancel, and I'm left with root 9. And again, you notice I drop the limit now because I'm letting x be 9, and that gives me 6. Okay, the other way, so we can say or, you can multiply by the conjugate. So you can take a limit as x approaches 9 of x minus 9 divided by root x minus 3, and then multiply by root x plus 3 divided by root x plus 3. And if you do that, you end up with x minus 9. Oops, sorry, i got to write my limit first. I'm going to run out of space if I don't. You end up with the limit as x approaches 9 of x minus 9 multiplied by root x plus 3. I'm not going to expand that part because on the bottom, root x, root x gives you x. The middle terms cancel when you expand, right, because you're multiplying by the conjugate. So you get plus 3 root x and then minus 3 root x. And then the last term is minus 9. And so then you end up these cancel. And you get root 9 plus 3. And again, now I've dropped the limit because I'm letting x equal 9, and that gives me 6. Well, either way, you can do it. But that's how you do things by direct substitution in terms of just if you have a limit that doesn't work nicely. Okay? And we're going to practice some more of them. But there are times where you have to, you have to look at, well, what happens if I don't get... Sorry, just give me one second. I wrote that. What happens if I get something that's not 0 over 0, but something that's a number divided by 0 like this? So I say 3 over x. Well, that gives me 3 over 0. And I say, what's that? Okay. When you get a situation like this, so any situation... that involves... A constant divided by zero, I'm going to say ends with in terms of your direct substitution, we have to use a table of values. And the reason we have to do that is because what can happen in this situation is you have three different possibilities. It could be that the answer is infinite. That's positive infinity. It could be that it's negative infinity, 
or it could be does not exist. Okay, if we don't know, we have to use a table of values. But the nice thing is you don't have to use a really big one. You just have to test one value on either side of zero. So I'm going to put 0 0.99 in. Or actually, I'm not even going to do that. I'm going to put something even smaller. I need something that's close to zero. So I'm going to say negative 0 0.01 and 0 0.01. I'm going to test one thing on either side of zero. So I'm going to take my calculator and I'm going to go 3 divided by 0 0.01. And that gives me 300. So this is 300. And this then by extension is negative 300. Now since there, so this is going to negative infinity then. I know there's only one number there, but you can see if I add more numbers here, and more zeros I mean, then it's just going to add zeros to this. This is going to positive infinity. So that means our answer is does not exist. If they both were going to the same thing, in other words, if they both were positive or both were negative, then it would be either the positive infinity or the negative infinity. But that's just the caveat at the end. It's not an indeterminate form, 0 over 0. It's a constant divided by 0. And if that happens, you do have to test to see what you get, either positive infinity, negative infinity, or you get two opposite signs. And if that happens, then it does not exist. So that's your introduction to limits. It's how to use limits with a graph, how to use limits with a table of values, and then finally how to do direct substitution. And I will say that direct substitution, I've given you a couple of examples here of 0 over 0. There's lots of different situations that could end in 0 over 0. Okay, so you've got to find common factors sometimes. Sometimes you actually have to put fractions together, so you have to do common denominators and those sort of things. These are just some examples of what you might do. All right, so I'm going to leave that with you, and we will go on from there in our next video to talk about continuity and, and all those sorts of things. But you need to practice limits and understand limits before we can get into calculus because that's what that depends on. The answer to our how do you find the equation of the slope of a curve depends on limits. So that's why we're starting there.